Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and welcome back to the Finance Channel. I hope all of you are having a great day out there. As always, here today, I want to talk to you all about and address something that I've been doing since the beginning of 2021. And this is something that has been called by many a big, massive, and colossal mistake. And in this video, I want to go through exactly what this thing is, my thought process behind it, and exactly why I personally think it's justified from a 6, 12, or multi-year standpoint. So if you end up enjoying this video and potentially end up finding some value in it, please consider subscribing. And out of the way, let's get into the video here. So let's go through this fully. First and foremost, I'm a stock and cryptocurrency investor. At core, I'm a stock market investor. I like to invest in stocks and companies. And when I see a good opportunity, I put my own money, my own funds into that certain company. And since the beginning of 2021, there has been this very, very interesting company that has caught my eye that has not only continued to execute, but has really gained a lot of steam since again, the beginning of this year. And the name of that company is Voyager Digital. This is a company that I talk about a ton on this channel. I go through updates on exactly what's going on with the stock, the company, the token, things along those lines. But this is the biggest position in my stock market portfolio. Currently, it makes up right around 40% of the total value of my investment portfolio. And because of that, some people, at least in the comment section, some people that I've talked about or talked to rather have said that this is a massive mistake. And no matter how much conviction you have in a company, you should never put over 30, 40% of your portfolio into that one position. So in this video specifically, now that we've kind of revealed this, I want to go through exactly what my thinking is behind putting so much of my money into Voyager stock, why I think it will pay out over the long run and why I'm willing to take that risk. So again, looking at Voyager, if you don't know what this is, they're basically a cryptocurrency brokerage. Exactly. You know, I started to look at this company back at the beginning of January. I made my first video, my analysis video on it, and I started to accumulate shares. Again, they're a cryptocurrency brokerage, a commission-free trading of uh, over 60 digital assets. They take a little bit of money off of each transaction from a, it's baked into the spread, the price, and that's how they make revenue. Essentially, you can earn interest on over 30 of your holdings through, again, uh, their lending program. And longer term, they have plans to expand it to being much, much more than just a cryptocurrency brokerage. But again, looking at Voyager, I started covering the stock at the beginning of the year, back in January. And immediately when I saw this stock, I saw potential. I saw that, hey, this is a company that currently they're just a brokerage that's going to make them a good amount of money. But longer term, they're going to have the opportunity and the potential to become something potentially like a Robin Hood, a SoFi, which is essentially an all-in-one lifestyle financial app based on the blockchain. And over the past six, seven, eight months since that time, Voyager has only continued to execute. But looking at my position sizing in Voyager, I started to buy shares in Voyager right at the beginning of January. And I wish we could zoom in here, but either way, I bought on this way up here back again from the beginning of January to again, mid January, you saw a run up from right around $4 per share to seven, $8 per share. Then we saw a massive dip down to just under $4. I bought the dip. I bought the high. And then we went on a massive run experiencing roughly a six to seven X in stock price from that bottom that we saw in January. And what did I do? I continued buying because my conviction in Voyager has continue to grow as time goes on. Despite this downturn that we've seen in stock price, and I'll go through this in a moment here, my conviction in this company and the stock and the execution of the management team has only continued to grow throughout this time, which has made me very confident Which with my position sizing, which at this point in time stands at over 40% of my portfolio. Now, was it 40% back here? No, in fact, it wasn't. It was closer to 20 to 30%. But with time, as I added on these dips, as I added through these elongated periods where fundamentals continue to improve, yet the price continued to decline, I continue to do what's known as dollar cost average. And although my original cost basis was right around $5 per share, since then, it's climbed to over $8. I don't know the exact number because, you know, I, I'm personally kind of uh, trained myself to not look at, you know, the stock brokerage as much to, again, uh, just kind of reduce and eliminate all emotion from trading. But either way, my average cost has gone up significantly, right around 8 $9 per share. But some people tell me, Daniel, you should have sold at $30. In hindsight, hey, I could have sold at $30. I could have bought at $10 a month ago where in Tift. 
We can't predict these things. And either way, I'm not going to sell my Voyager shares because over the long run, I see a lot of potential here. But let me address exactly what I talked about at the beginning of this video. The people who call this a mistake, putting 40% of my portfolio into one single company, one single stock. And let me preface this by saying, no matter which way you look at it, I'm taking on a lot of risk. By putting 40% of my assets rather into one single company, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm putting on a lot more risk than if I only put 10 20% of my portfolio into Voyager stock. If Voyager goes bankrupt, I lose 40% of my portfolio. At the end of the day, that's the risk with putting so much of your portfolio into one certain company, one certain stock. But my conviction in this and my kind of ideology of the stock market is saying, hey, you like Voyager? I have conviction in it. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Now, I want to show you guys something about diversification because this is a concept that has been discussed and debated a lot since the stock market really began, how much of your portfolio should you put in different stocks? What allocation should you uh, kind of put to different companies, different stocks? And when you look at all time greats, when you look at Warren Buffett, the all time, you know, you can call him the most successful investor out there, someone who has absolutely killed it. When we look at Warren Buffett's portfolio, and this is just a video here, roughly a minute long, I'm just going to play this as I talk here. When you look at Warren Buffett's portfolio, you'll see that when it comes to diversification, this guy puts his money in the companies he believes in the most. When you look at Coca-Cola, one of his most all-time successful investments ever, at one point, this thing made roughly 37% of his portfolio, similar to where Voyager is as, again, a percentage of my portfolio at this moment in time. You look at American Express, over 20%. At one time, American Express and Coca-Cola, or, you know, for many years, made up over half of Warren Buffett's investing portfolio. So you look at this and you say, all right, What's this saying? It's saying that if you have conviction in a business and if you have conviction in a company and if it stands out from other opportunities out there, there is no reason for you not to put a significant amount of your capital into that business. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do your due diligence, can't research, you just see an idea, you plow money into it. It means if you understand the business, if you understand the idea, if you understand the future and the risks, there's potential for you to put a significant amount of your capital in this. Now, again, I'm just going to skip a little bit to the future here, but you look at now and Apple is again, one of the biggest companies in the world. And you look at Warren Buffett here. He is a big, big Apple bull, someone who believes in the company. What has he done over the past few years? Well, he's made Apple. Uh, and again, it's kind of blurring out here, but as of June, 2020, Apple was roughly 38% of his portfolio. And as of today, since Apple has gone up so significantly since June of 2020, again, you look at Apple's share price here, you compare, go back to, let's go to a five year here, June of 2020, uh, where are we here? I'm kind of keeping track of these dates. Apple stock is up 71%. Sure, he sold along the way up, but Apple stock makes up nearly or potentially even over half of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio at this moment in time. And again, this shows you historically, this totally made sense. If you bought Apple and made 40% of your portfolio back in the early 2000s, it would have been a very successful investment for you. Now, that doesn't mean you can do this with every company. And it doesn't mean you can just throw money at something and it'll grow significantly over time. But it shows that Warren Buffett believes in potentially having some exceptions when it comes to diversification. Now you look at other people, you look at Peter Lynch, same thing with Peter Lynch, who calls diversification, diversification. Now, again, it's so important to understand. And you know, Warren Buffett says it right here, you need to understand how the company works and how it will achieve what it sets out to do, not just plowing money into a company because you like it and because you like its prospects. When I look at Voyager Digital as a company, as a stock, as a, you know, an entity that's doing what they're doing, I see something with you know, not only great prospects, but also immaculate fundamentals. A company that has been absolutely blindsided by Wall Street and been really kind of put under this massive negativity cycle, which has only continued to escalate since really cryptocurrencies originally crashed back in roughly the end of May, early June. So when I look at Voyager, when I look at their fundamentals, when I look at what they're doing over the long run, I like their prospects. But alongside that, I've done my due diligence to where, hey, this company is significantly undervalued based off of where the business is here today. And hey, if they manage to continue growing that, 
there may be significant opportunity here. When you look at Voyager Digital, again, back in you know early 2021 days, this company was making roughly $100 in revenue per account per month significant levels, right? That is unheard of in the brokerage industry and did go down back again when cryptocurrencies did experience that mini correction slash crash period of negativity back in again, May, June-ish. In their latest quarter, this is again, the second quarter of this year, they call it Q4 in their fiscal year calendar. They averaged roughly $50 or $55 rather in revenue per account per month. Currently, they're sitting at roughly 800,000 accounts. Now, again, they haven't reported this exactly in their most recent quarter. Again, the June quarter, they finished that with just under 700,000 funded accounts. I think it was closer to roughly 660,000. But either way, you look at their historical growth, make some assumptions. It's very easy to assume that, again, at the end of August, 800,000 should be a very, very likely number for something like Voyager. You do the math. You see, hey, this company can do over half a billion dollars in revenue based off of where the business is here today, a 50% operating income margin. That's what they reported in just the first quarter of this year with $60 million in ridiculously high profit revenue. This Again, they said that they expect this number to actually grow their operating income margin to grow over time as, again, costs remain stagnant, revenue increases. You factor in some taxes, some, you know, uh, interest expenses, annualizing that from the most recent quarter, you get roughly, you know, $200 million in potential net income or a PE ratio of roughly 10. Now, keep in mind, this is using the fully diluted market cap of this company at roughly 176 million shares, fully diluted factoring in wall warrants options that have yet to turn into shares. And you see that this company is trading practically for bankruptcy. You know, you don't see many companies trading at a 10 PE. Maybe you see some company that doesn't really have a future. Like, a, I, I don't want to put any names out there as I don't want to offend any investors out there. But there are a lot of companies out there that have either dying futures or have their balance sheets filled with a ridiculous amount of debt. Sometimes you actually have both scenarios in one stock. But those are the companies you'd expect to trade at 10 PE ratio model or multiples rather. Not a company that's continuing to grow revenues, users, profits, etc., on a relatively regular basis. Now, although again, the revenue is somewhat seasonal with the price of cryptocurrencies, we experienced a significant drop, yet we're still at a significant level. Even if this number drops to, let's say, $35 in revenue per account per month, similar to maybe something like Coinbase back at the beginning of the year, you get a 16 PE ratio model. You drop that down to 30, 25 even, you get roughly a 22. You see that this company is pricing in a scenario where cryptocurrencies go into somewhat of a corrective state or maybe even a bear market, but is ignoring the potential for cryptocurrency volume to return on their platform. Now, we'll get some form of update with volume, revenue, users, etc. within the next couple of months here. Again, their next quarter finishes at the end of September. We may get some update in October, but either way, this company, they're doing great things. They're trading at a great valuation. And when you factor all of these things together, this great valuation, this great company, and not only that, but the future that they have with, again, all of these different things, their desktop app, business to business partnerships, debit cards, credit cards, margin, new asset listings, traditional banking products, equities, being able to buy stocks on their platform, which again, they're partnering with Market Rebellion to offer that international expansion to Canada, Europe, mergers and acquisitions, self-custody wallets, they don't have it here, but payment processing, this company's got a lot of potential. And that's the reasoning behind me putting so much of my portfolio into Voyager stock. It's why I believe so much in the company. Not only is it a company with a bright future, but it's also one that's trading at a great valuation. When you have those two things, and hey, when you look at their balance sheet, again, it's not like this company's at the risk of potential bankruptcy. They have well over 100, if not over $200 million in capital at this point in time, pretty much no debt on that balance sheet. So when you factor all this thing together, or these things together, rather, it's a company that has really been caught under that headwind that, you know, currently rather is a headwind of being a cryptocurrency stock that is at risk of cryptocurrencies getting banned. And hey, as long as cryptocurrencies continue to grow in popularity and adoption continues to grow throughout the world, I think Voyager has a lot of potential. And that's personally why I'm investing over 40% of my portfolio in Voyager digital stock. In addition to that, I think this is a really important part. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. You know, I make Voyager videos on a relative 
relatively regular basis, I'd say, you know, pretty much a few times every single week, I make videos on Voyager, whether it be updates on what's happening with the company, valuation updates on the stock, updates on the token, uh, talking with, you know, my buddies DJ Crypto and Digital Doji on the Voyager Roundtable. If I didn't have a position in Voyager stock, which I very well could have not have, I could have just made videos about Voyager, gotten views, whatnot. That doesn't matter to me. What does is having a position in Voyager, building my conviction through talking about it, and by having so much of you know my skin in the game at this point in time, you know, you as the viewer should you know feel rather confident that you know I'm not going to overlook any risks. I'm not going to overlook any potential positives. And I'm not just going to focus in on the hype. I'm going to give you an analysis on Voyager, what's happening at the company, and hey, although a potential bear market is a risk in the short term. For something like Voyager Digital Stock, I think the market has heavily priced that in at this point. And I think, it, again, at this point, it's really overlooking some of that long-term potential and long-term opportunity here. So with Voyager, I see minimal risk. I see long-term upside. That's why I'm so heavily exposed to it. And that's why I personally think it's you know such a great company to hold over the long run. Not financial advice, of course. I can't tell you to buy or sell a stock either way. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you found some value in it, please consider subscribing and let me know if you kind of enjoy the style of content uh, different than anything I've really up to, uh, uploaded rather on this channel before. And hey, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.